What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of La Liga Career Mode. This is episode number 7 and we start on today's episode off on the back of our defeat to Espanyol ending our nice little mini streak by seeing that Barcelona are considering recalling Colado in January and I'm okay with that. This guy's only played two games all season long. It's Catania who's coming back from injury. Good, good news there because we've missed him big time in our back line since going down. Um, but yeah, I'm not mad that Barca want to recall Colado. I mentioned very briefly in an earlier episode that Santiago Arias, you know, has been threatened to be recalled by Diego Simeone because he's not playing enough. Well, he started the majority of our games this season. It makes no sense. For Colado, it does, though. Only two appearances all season long. We're not playing him. I get that. But Arias right now is a, a regular member of our first team. Why he's going back, I don't know. Even so, common bug in this year's FIFA career. And as we know, players often get recalled unless they're one of the first names and always in the starting eleven. Anyway, for the first game of today's episode, not really looking forward to this the La Liga champions this year Real Madrid under Carlo Ancelotti and heading into the game after our loss at the RCD Stadium I definitely felt as though we're going to have back-to-back -back losses here taking on one of the strongest teams in world football with one of the deadliest forwards up top as well Karim Benzema would indeed open the scoring for the Galacticos yeah great save initially by Luis Maximiano at his near post but a rebound turning got a touch but couldn't keep it out and Real's legendary number nine gets yet another this season 11 in 14 as he's going for the golden boot. Karim Benzema right now is absolutely timeless, isn't he? What a season he's been having with Real Madrid this year. Anyway, 12 minutes into the game, we're down by a goal. But as I mentioned before, we know we can't defend. You know, we've had two clean sheets all season long. We are not a defense-based team. We've got one of the worst defensive records in the division. But we can score goals. You know, we've we've got a really decent record when going forward, if not at the back. So I thought, okay, we've fallen behind to Real, but no reason we can't find 11. And 14 minutes in, so close to scoring a thunderbolt through that man once again Luis Javier Suarez our number nine and top scorer this year cannoning one off the crossbar as we still trail by a goal we had a really good spell of pressure midway through the first half as well we were still trailing by a goal but testing Courtois peppering the Belgians goal with shots unfortunately couldn't find a breakthrough and a leveler and oftentimes in football that's how it goes you know when you're an underdog you often have like a mini spell of pressure and if you don't get a goal it seems as though you've sort of like used up all your energy used up all your chances and then normal service will resume after that spell of pressure ends that's exactly what happened in the second half we had two good chances in the first half to find a level i couldn't do so and as soon as the restart began i thought I've wasted my chances and Real are going to double their lead. Exactly what happened. Casemiro, the Brazilian, doubles the advantage for Real. It's 2-0 to the visitors. And Carlo Ancelotti knows job is basically done here in Andalusia. And again, I wasn't playing too badly when going forward, but defensively, I was just getting carved open. When there's so many great attack-based players in the Real Madrid system, though, I guess it's not too much of a surprise. Luka Modric, for example, how good has he been this season? And right on cue, he almost got Real's third goal. Great double stop here by Luis, kept it at 2-0, but unfortunately that was how the game would finish in Andalusia. Final score, Granada nil, Real Madrid 2, and sadly it's back-to-back -back losses for Granada and back-to-back -back games without a goal as well. So, yeah, again, I didn't play too badly, you know, going forward, but you look at the defense there, uh, 10 shots allowed on my goal and an XG of 5.3. Had it not been for our number one, we probably would have lost the game by four or five goals. And, and that really has been the common theme to start the season off, but also throughout FIFA 22 for me, you know, I can score goals. I can score quite a lot of them as well when needed to do so, but it's defensively. You know, all throughout this FIFA, I have just never learned how to defend, but I will give myself a little bit of credit I think everyone's having the same experience this year aren't they you know FIFA is just such an open game this year it's goal glut goal glut goal glut you know goalless draws are really a massive rarity this year I know we had two of them in the last episode but still you know it really is a rarity to see goalless draws on occasion so yeah I guess it's not too damning for me that we're the league's worst defenders when ultimately we are one of the league's worst teams and we do have a very young inexperienced back line with not much quality and I'm playing the air on ultimate and, of course, defending in this FIFA is just incredibly difficult. How many more excuses am I going to give myself, eh? But uh, still, second game of today's episode, traveling to the Basque region for this one, Athletic Bilbao. One of the most interesting teams in European football. As we know, Athletic Bilbao have this uh, this rule where they can only play Basque players. It's, uh, I don't know if it's an unwritten rule or not, but it is a rule regardless for them. They only play Basque players and homegrown talent. But it's not stopped them from being a really solid team over the years. 
players, you know, they've obviously spent numerous times playing European football. They've got a glorious stadium as well and so much talent too, some of which has moved on and much of which has stayed as well. I think the best talent they've got right now are the, uh, the Williams uh, brothers, Inyaki Williams and Nico Williams as well. But even so, heading into the game, we fell behind early two goals. Shocking, shocking start. And once again, my defensive woes continue. But like I said in the Real Madrid game, I can't defend. I'll never be able to defend, but I can score. And this man certainly can. Luis Javier Suarez with yet another goal. If we stay up this year and finish mid-table, there's only one man that deserves the credit, and that's our number nine. He puts us back in the game, makes it 2-1, half deficit. And I felt for sure if we kept on staying in attack mode, we'd find a level before the break as well. Down the left-hand side, 10 minutes before the break. Carlos Neva back heels to Antonio Villar. Down the left flank, rolls it across, and there is Suarez to convert from close range. I gave the 16-year-old his debut against Espanyol away in Barcelona a couple of games ago. Left him out of the squad against Real, put him back in the team for this one, though, and he got his first assist in pro football as well. Brilliant back heel by Carlos Neva, though, to open up the play. Villar rolls it across, and the 16-year-old's first assist goes to Luis Suarez. Is that a surprise? Absolutely not. So from 2-0 down, we we're battle back to make it 2-2 and I thought, okay, all right, here we go. Stay in attack mode and we could possibly get in front for the first time. 14 minutes after the restart, we fall behind once again. Berengua with the finish from close range, but such an unfortunate goal this one, to be fair. Jerome made a really good block with a rebound coming straight back to Bilbao. And I'm just, I'll be totally honest here as Marcelino's going wild. We've been so unlucky this season. You know, we really have. When you think about the amount of times we've hit the woodwork, conceded late goals and rebound goals like that one there, I, I think we've been really unlucky this season. Okay, I'm not going to admit it. Yes, my defense has been, you know, absolutely shocking, but... I do feel we've also been really unlucky as well. We battled back from two goals down to level it, but then lost the game courtesy of a rebound goal. Three straight losses for Granada. Tough teams, to be fair. Espanyol, Real Madrid, and Athletic Bilbao as well. And I won't deny it, too. Had not been for Maximiano, could have lost the game by a few more goals in this one. But even so, quite unlucky to lose the game to a rebound goal there. But just one of those things. Three straight losses for Granada. And our nice mini run of form seems like a distant memory now. Following that, I changed the position of Fanal Costa, the sole Portuguese lad in our academy. He grew six ratings to 57 overall, keep an eye on him. And after the losing streak for Granada, three straight defeats down to 15th in the table. And only four points clear of Unai Emery's Villarreal, who have made a really tough start to the season. Now, there's no doubt about it. Villarreal are going to get a kick on at some point. I mean, I think it's three wins in 15 they've got so far. One of them come against us on the opening night. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Villarreal will get a move on at some point. So, after three straight losses, looking a little bit nervously over my shoulder right now. And I mentioned before, this Granada team, not much quality. Very, very young. Very inexperienced as no doubt about it it's a little bit nervy right now. Three straight losses and sliding down the table. And La Liga is such a competitive division as well. And after what happened in real life with Granada, their relegation on the final day, courtesy of wins for Mallorca and Cadiz, who we've got in this final month of December here, and Deportivo Alaves, one of the teams that were relegated from La Liga this year, things need to pick up. And in this month of December here, as we're four games away from the halfway stage and three games away from the winter break, there's no doubt about it. I need to pick up at least two wins out of three, I would say, against Mallorca, Cadiz, and Deportivo Alaves. All three teams, I would say, are weaker teams in the division. Mallorca and Cadiz only survived on the final day at Granada's expense. Deportivo Alaves went down. So heading into this month of December, I thought, okay, we've had a tough run, three straight losses. It ends here, and we pick up a big win against Deportivo Alaves. So right from kickoff in attack mode, Antonio going down the left, gets around his man, and shoots and puts it just wide as he searches for his first goal in pro football. It was very close on his debut against Espanyol, very close there, but a signal of intent from the 16 year old and a signal of intent from Granada right from the first whistle being in attack mode needed to win this game and five minutes in after we just missed a target with VR we would take the lead Suarez normally the guy that bangs it in gets the assist for the opening goal and I've talked about this guy as potentially being a future club captain it's the Cameroonian Jan Bryce attack he's fourth of the season already 
He's averaging just under one in every three. And for an anchor man, that's really impressive. Ataki makes it 1-0. We have the lead. And a lightning quick start gave us the early advantage. 35 minutes in, though. Divis is looking for their leveler. And they almost got it as well. Great stop by Luis Maximiano. Low down to his left. Kept us still leading by one. And at halftime, I was thinking, right... I've just got to keep on attacking because I can't defend. I know Deportivo Alaves will saw at some point. I've got to find a second goal. And oh, this guy has had so many chances for his first goal in pro football. Two in the same game here for the 16-year-old. Straight in the goalkeeper. I should have buried that. And then from the corner off the post and then cleared off the line. A little bit of a scramble as we still currently led by one. And then, uh, well, Antonio shows why he's got a long way to go in his career before he comes a deadly inside forward. That went so far wide of the post. I think it went towards the corner flag, closer to the goal frame. So it's still leading by a goal, but off the post, ball cleared off the line, great fast start to the second half, just like in the first. Needed to stay in attack mode, and 57 minutes in, as Antonio rolls through Luis, he beats the last man, Matt Miazga, and smacks it in to the back of the net, and it's lift off at a Nuevo Estadio de los Carmen. This huge game against Deportivo Alaves, and we're tuning it up. Assisted the first, score the second and it's our key star number nine who in this game proved to be the difference maker as he so often is in this Granada team there's no doubt about it I mentioned before if we are to stay in this division it depends on the form and the fitness of this guy assisted the first scored the second two in a 3-0 victory for Granada absolutely on it from a first whistle in this game despite missing some chances hitting the woodwork and seeing the ball clear off the line we deservedly won by three goals goals to nil. Huge win against Deportivo Alaves that ends our streak of three straight losses. Massive pressure relieving win and the perfect way to start December and once again I'm thanking our number nine. He is too good for this team. But that will end today's episode of La Liga Carima guys. Massive thank you for watching the episode. Really hope you have enjoyed it and if you have enjoyed today's episode then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you for the following episode where the January transfer window will open with Granada CF. Very soon.